Big Questions with the Dead Milkman. Welcome to Big Questions with the Dead Milkman. Today, we're going to go down memory lane, if we can. (laughs) (laughs) The question is, what are your memories, both good and maybe not so good, of the making of the Big Lizard in My Backyard album? And for Dan, the question would be, or what are your memories, good and not so good, of hearing that album? (laughs) And this question was suggested by our loyal viewer, Wes Strobel. Not this specific question, but this concept of a question. And um, so I'll go, I'll go with what I remember, and it's rather vague. I, I know it. This is the album we're talking about, in case you don't know. Big Lizard in My Backyard. It was the Dead Milkman's debut album, uh, which we started recording in 1984. I remember that we wanted to make an album. We had played a bunch of shows in 84 that was we had we had a tape that we sold called death rides a pale cow that came out early that we released earlier in the year and we wanted to get a, an album out maybe specifically because that was how we could tour the whole united states um so we we had a band fund and we scraped it we had i think it was about a grand i'm not sure exactly the figure but somewhere in that neighborhood of money saved up and I vaguely remember going stu- like shopping for studios like where are we gonna record and one of the the only place I remember looking at other than this place we settled on was the recording studio of the band D Control their home studio because they heard that we wanted to make the album they gave us a pretty good deal offer anyway like it was a four track Real to real, it was a step above what we were doing uh, with the Fostex four track cassette. But we ended up settling on third story recording. I think our friend Bob Dickey was an engineer. Up oh, there comes the cat. <laughs> I'm bringing in the kitty. <laughs> Somebody that we knew. Mine are locked uh, out. <laughs> and span we knew Ambush Bugs had recorded there and it sounded pretty good. So we had. Decided to look at it. We liked it. We booked some time. I think, what was it? Two days to record and a third day. Like it was a weekend. Maybe, let's say, a Saturday, a Sunday. One day for recording the basic tracks. Then the next day for vocal overdubs and whatnot. And then, say, a week a week night was mixing. And Bob Dickey, sure enough, was there doing the engineering. We recorded ten songs. And I know what they are. They were... Tiny Town, VFW, Serrated Edge, Big Lizard, Bitchin' Camara, Filet of Soul, Right Wing Pigeons, Dean's Dream, Laundromat Song, and Nutrition. And so the, we had enough money to do 10. Yeah, we did 10. We did those 10. We picked them out ahead of time. We did them quickly. No fuss. I remember it was fun. <laughs> I had a good time doing it. So you remember Bob Dickey. I don't remember Bob being there, but the, the guy who ran the studio also worked John. with us. John yeah. Wicks, yeah. Yeah, he he was there, but he wasn't there. This is why I remember we had a different engineer for, okay. And I can tell that that those 10 songs were the first by the way the guitar sounds in those songs. Um, so we get a mix down of the, the 10 songs and we make a demo tape or like a five song or four song demo, that, which we send out to record companies because we were trying to get a record deal. And we We don't have enough money to press it ourselves at this point we spent the money on recording it we did not we got a response one rejection i don't remember which company sent us a rejection but no response from any of the others and we sent out dozens of these tapes um but then one day dave mentions that he he his girlfriend had a record by this band called get smart And there was an address on the back of it. The address was th- literally three blocks away from where Rodney and I lived. And also that's where we rehearsed at the time in the basement of this place on 9th Street. I think they're, they, they were on 6th Street. So I said, why don't we just go over there after rehearsal and bring him the tape? So get a case of beer in that tape and we bring it over. And we meet Colin Kammerer, one half of Fever Records. And eventually... 
he says he doesn't sign us to a record deal right then and there but he says i don't think that's enough for an album why don't you record some more songs and he fronts us i don't know another grand or so and we book some more time this by then this is early 1985 and we record another batch of songs maybe another 10 or so or nine by the way a couple of the songs that ended up on the original album were recorded on dean's four track those are the ones that have if you have the album they have asterisks on the end and it says they were produced at db dean's basement studio db studio and the mike ace and Johnny Urshur, the Johnny producer, Urshur, aka John Urshur. What, what did they actually do? Press the record, yeah, right. press stop. <laughs> can I can I interject? The, yes, uh, one please thing? do. <laughs> I think after we recorded those ten songs and we were hitting a wall trying to get somebody to put the record out, didn't our good friend Dan Map consider lending us some money? Oh, that's right. Yeah, to press the record, and then unfortunately he, was, he had a car accident and couldn't. We were definitely that was what we were going to do with the ten songs: is press them up. You don't come back from Dan Mapp's car. And then Dan had, yeah, our good friend Dan Mapp, he was living out in Illinois <laughs> or somewhere. And yeah, he totaled his car and that was sad. Joe, and, Joe, yeah. you're forgetting something. What am I forgetting? Midnight Lady. What's that? Don't you remember when we were waiting around to get in the, in the studio, when we recorded the first batch, there was another band there and they were recording a song and we had to hear them working on it over and over again. Midnight Lady. Oh, Midnight. So, so <laughs> folks, then the, these assholes hear this and learn the song. So <laughs> we go in to record and, you know, the, and John Wicks is in the booth. He goes, all right, ready? rolling and mm -hmm. immediately they go into midnight lay <laughs> john wicks. yeah so the tw no, no, third, third story was uh, owned by john wicks and at the time it was literally on the third floor of a row home on sansom street um above a restaurant which his wife owned and it was called the white dog cafe i think the white dog cafe is still there in that same exact place it's a little more up upscale than it used to be but the third story yeah. recording is not there anymore yeah it moved to a 51st and walnut so it was like an attic it was literally is the top floor and you the roof the angles of the roof you could see in some of the sides because and that's, that's where the where guy came up with earth day kept his dead girlfriend in a trunk out back hmm. interesting hmm. so yeah um yeah that we recorded the other songs then um i think colin wanted us to he wanted his partner who lived in chicago the other part of beaver to hear us play live and then we did we went out and played live over in milwaukee or chicago chicago is and that the we, trip we got signed to a deal defoliance? yeah we met the defoliants at the cubby bear that's right the band of defoliants so that was in 1980 at the beginning of 19 at the end of 1984 right and and uh yeah yeah and then he agreed he said okay i'll give you the money and that we recorded the rest of the album in 1985 it's, that's how it worked but when the second session that we had i had a i was miserable with a cold a head cold and john wicks so that i could so i would stop coughing gave me some coughing syrup and that's i was under the uh Influence of coughing syrup for the second. Tussin up, tussin up, <laughs> tussin up, tussin up, and then the next, the very next day, I passed out from dehydration. <laughs> oh, I remember and, that. And Rodney, Rodney called an ambulance, and I got taken to the hospital. And I was, <laughs> I, it's, it's more serious than you might think. But dehydration can I don't need make, to need to make light of don't, it. Don't. May, if you especially if you have a cold and you're taking lots of coughs here drink lots of water don't do what i did but i i was okay and i don't remember coming up with the title i know it was the title of one of the songs but let's move on <laughs> oh Man. so you I want to hear you. me talk about it yeah um i first i actually made a I dubbed, I, I took a, a blank tape and made a copy of it from my cousin Woods and he had the CD 
And so I always knew, what is it, Gorilla Girl and Tugina are not on the, the record. And the tape, I think. Yeah. But anyway, so I had um, I had that on one side, and I think Metaphysical Graffiti was on the other side. Still have those tapes, but I'm not where I am now. But um, and I was excited to get Big Lizard in my backyard on vinyl when I found it used because I thought there'd be a lyric sheet in it, and the one I had, the one I got didn't have it. But I ended up getting another copy later that had a lyric sheet in it. So. Um, as far as like the songs on it, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that may have been like the maybe second or third album of yours that I'd heard. So I had already been familiar. So it, I've tried to imagine what it's like to have not have heard you guys or known you guys and heard that album. And it must have been awesome. I but, imagine not hearing that album all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's great, and I think we play a lot of songs off of it for a reason. It's it's a good album, and I think the fans love it. And of course, it has a bitch and Camaro on it. Um, I always I thought we were going to do that, do another take of bitch and Camaro, but I think we ran out of time. And never did. Couldn't afford it. You know what? I will. <laughs> I will say, I've always loved that. Um, there's a lot of songs on it. You know, it's. Takes up a some minute and 20 seconds, but there's a lot of songs. <laughs> so it's yeah, better I, that we didn't release the 10 song version that we did that, that, that Dan had two. that car accident. There are five more songs on it than are on the Clash's Sandinista, and that's a triple record set. <laughs> so it is a bit of an accomplishment. Um, but yeah, you know, it stands out as like probably the most consistently like fast paced kind of like skate. Skate music. That's my, like my brother would listen to it too. Like skating, it's older. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I think it's a great album. Um, thank you for making it. <laughs> it's interesting that it wasn't the, your first exposure to us. Yeah. I think uh, Bucky Fellini was the first. Okay. I think Joe's punishing me. <laughs> for me, it's like torture talking about like, like, nostalgic stuff or whatever so folks first of all if you want to hear something from the early 80s stick around the one i give recommendations because i've i got a story for you um but uh, um i will i will bring this up because this is something that happened and hasn't been mentioned yet but um a movie came out in the in early 1985 that really changed because we started recording in 84 it just changed the direction of the album uh and that movie was of course pink nights now, if you're not familiar with the movie, which is like saying if you're not familiar with Star Wars, everybody is, but we don't know. Some people might, you know, have grown up in some part of the world where where Pink Nights was was unknown. So I will now read to you the official synopsis from Pink Nights, a movie that really helped formulate when we went back into the studio, the direction of Big Lizard. So here we go. Danny is shy and always astonished how his friend Jeff can just walk up to a total stranger and say hi. Even more astonishing that Danny meets three girls the next week, and when his mother goes on vacation, one after another shows up on his doorstep, and they move in with him. However, that's rather a problem for Danny, because in love, he's just with one of them. So we were like, my God, Danny, in love, he's just with one of them. We've really, we've got to rethink this album. Um, you know, I mean, I, I remember I, I came into, I was walking uh, down the street and uh, Henry Rollins, who back then was known as Andre Rodinsky, I remember him leaving the local art house theater. And he just looked at me and he said, I'm always astonished how you can walk up to a total stranger and say hi. And I said, I will take that and run with it. And that will be the direction of the next record. So people, really, if you can, uh, this weekend, rent Pink Nights. Uh, and now I, I know, that Dan, you were too young to see it when it was in theaters, but I, I did know certain cities, larger cities, did arrange special matinees so that the young people could see Pink Nights. I don't know if you saw Pink Nights there or What's if it you rated? about it. But, What's it rated? Uh, it, there, can it really be rated anything? Because it's not, 
the, the standards of the planet Earth do not do not apply to me. <laughs> um, don't you understand? In love, he's just with one of them. So, um, yeah. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tell you, folks. It, really, to understand Big Lizard, you have to see Pink Knights. Yeah, I just I was gonna say I just remembered you know the going three floors up or yeah the third floor stairs carrying gear up the stairs. Um, I was gonna mention and you already covered you already covered a lot of it, Joe. That Spit Sink and that other song that I will not name were recorded in my parents' basement on the Fostex. And, gor and, gor and Gorilla Girl. Oh yeah, Gorilla Girl too. Which wasn't on the original no, no. pressing. And then of course to Gina was added later and that was recorded also, in the back room at 221 South 44th Street. Yes. Um, also on the false deck. Yeah. So, so I don't know. And you, it's we a had, document of the time, of the time, of the day. <clears throat> you had PZM mics that were flat. Yeah, I still have one of them. I don't know what happened to the other one. It disappeared. Those were also the mics used to capture the sound in the movie Pink Nights. And that's why we went with them. Do you remember anything about coming up with the the cover art? Because I sort of remember looking at, you, you did it manually and not on a computer. Yeah, this was like, before not on Photoshop. Yeah, I had to cut out, I had to cut out and what were called, uh, I guess they were called Amberlith or Rubylith. Yeah. The old way of printing, you had to cut, cut out a, uh, a shape for each layer of color that you wanted to print. So I did the black line drawing, and then I cut out um, this kind of plastic film for the for the yellow and the green and the red. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I seem to remember working on it right up until, I mean, I can't understand why, right up until we went on tour? I don't know. Well, it couldn't have been it. There, there might have been a deadline for the. Yeah, there was print. some kind of deadline, and I remember like staying up all night to get it done. So. Yeah, for some reason back then, the 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 deadline, the faster deadline, earlier deadline was the art, and now it's switched to like it doesn't matter because this, it takes so long. Yeah. They didn't have as much of a lead time for pressing records back then as they. And did. then the other little trivia. I mean, I guess it. I can't remember if we gave credit on the back of the album. The photo of the band was taken in the bathroom at Troy's restaurant in West Philly, where I guess you could get a 40 and some uh, cheese fries or whatever. I I got sick there once. But once once there were two stories of Troy's. One was where a uh, a famous punk rock musician showed his penis to some girls. And, and one of them said, it's like a penis, but somehow smaller. And uh, um, the other one, I was there once getting hammered or, you know, Troy sitting at a table drinking. And um, some of these girls I was talking to were talking about they've taken, they were taking acid. And this guy came up and he started yelling at him. He's like, I had a friend and that destroyed his life. He was going to law school. He was going to be a lawyer, but then he took acid. And now he lives in a house with two women and they he doesn't even work. They just pay him to have sex with him. I'm like, how is this a bad thing? It's almost <laughs> the plot of Pink Nights, honestly. <laughs> yeah. That's rather a problem for that guy because in love, he's just with one of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I remember those are my two choice words. I think I got sick too um, when we were taking that photo. I think I I, I ate it. Is Troy still there? Oh no, that closed a long time. Okay, good. Then I can say that I got a little ill. I think from eating there. I think I had picked up something. Yeah, that's all I have. All right. <clears throat> and Rodney, Rodney has nothing more to add. I was useless at <laughs> unless you want to talk about Pig Nights. It's a good film. <laughs> I'm looking it up right, right now. <clears throat> so maybe, would, you maybe, ever, would you guys ever consider playing Violent School live? We did. Uh, we, we have played, played it. The last it was in our yeah, it's got that. It's got the rhyme of school and cool, which is always. I don't know. I, I kind of regret that, but you say "taste my boot" in it, which is great. <laughs> so I don't remember anything anymore. <laughs> I think I think the newest song on <clears throat> the uh, from the time when we recorded this was "Lucky." Yeah. yeah, but that's another trivia. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we we haven't played Violent School. That was one of the least played, I think, ones. We used to play it. Let's go on to recommendations. I would like to recommend a card game for mild 
family fun. And it's made by the people to do Uno. It's called Skippo. <clears throat> and anybody age seven and older is allowed to play it. But you can play with, I think, up to six people. And it's just an easy game to play around with the family. You, the idea is to get rid of all your cards in sequence. And there's a card called Skippo, which could be any card. So it's pretty, pretty mild fun for the family. I bet some hipster band is probably going to call themselves Skippo. My sister and I used to play Skippo. <clears throat> Could you play with a regular deck and just, I mean, Skippo's like the wild, like a jack? You could, do anything um, you could play with it. You could play with a regular deck and have a joker or decide uh, an ace is it or something like that if you wanted. <clears throat> you but you'd terrible. probably have to combine a couple decks to get okay. enough. <clears throat> I would recommend <clears throat> painting. Have you ever tried painting? I'm not very good at it, so I don't do it. But you, the listener, which, you know, besides just the three of you guys, you should try painting. Why not? What's the worst that could happen? You get some paint on your hands? I'm not talking about painting the walls, folks. Paint a picture. Does it have to be something you see? No, something in your head if you want. Or something you see in your head. Paint. Paint the town red. <laughs> uh, I would like to recommend a couple of YouTube videos tonight. Uh, one, the first one is from a YouTube fellow named Alex Ball. He shows you all about the Roland System 100 semi-modular synthesis, synthesizer system from 1975. Uh, it's a great video. Um, I love the industrial styling of this uh, synth. And Alex does some great little mini song demos through, <clears throat> throughout the video. Um, and then also in a separate video, which I'll provide the link for, he does a great cover of the Human League song called Being Boiled. And because Martin Ware used one of these synths on that recording. So I'll I'll uh, provide a link to his cover and also I'll provide a link to um, the original Human League version of the song Being Boiled. All worthwhile, all recommended for you to check out. And we should probably throw in a link. I mean, I'll send one over of the uh, um, Randolph and Mortimer mix of Vestral Mouse is being boiled, which is my my favorite version of being boiled. It's a great song. I have I have samples of uh, Vienna going Buddha, 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 because I covered it. Um, oh, okay. So um, I'm going to start. Uh, I was out painting the town red last Saturday night. Uh, <laughs> my friend Tim and uh, uh, Tim turns out he had been the drummer for the band Specimen uh, in the early '80s. He looked quite different then. And specimen, we were we were discussing a bunch of stuff, and it came up that specimen in 1984 played on a children's show called Number 73. That's weird enough, okay? And we're going to put up a link to the footage. It's a specimen on num uh, number 73, and we've got like uh, the date is like 06 30 uh, or 3006 uh, 80. I think it's important to say it's also in England. Yes, it's in England. This is super important, okay? <laughs> because the next day, people wrote in, and there is a small wardrobe malfunction if you keep your eye out for it. But the next day, the BBC was flooded with angry letters and calls about specimen being on there, which in retrospect is odd because the other guest on the show was Gary Glitter. And at one point, there's Gary Glitter is giving a kid a ride on his shoulders, and once you see it, you can't unsee it. So uh, much love to my friend Tim for pointing this out to me. Uh, he's drumming now for uh, a new band. They're, they're going to be really good. But I just I I was sitting there in, uh, upstairs at Tattoo Moms just looking at this video on my phone going, how is this a thing that actually happened? So you folks have to watch it. You'll love it. Uh, secondly, uh, when we were out that night, I uh, saw some bands. And the opening act was uh, of three bands is a band that I really love. They're called Cold Choir. I uh, love them so much I bought their CD, which you can actually listen to on Bandcamp. Uh, the CD is called Velvet Surrender. And they were really, really good. And I also bought a ticket. I have to cover up the, the breast on the Naked Witch here. And I, I bought one of, her sticker, one of their stickers. I love laser stickers. And I put it on my focus right. So I'll always put stickers on your equipment because that way it's less likely to walk away when you're playing a show because you can say, obviously, you know, I would be the guy with the Naked Witch and the Cold Choir stickers. All right. So um, and finally, getting to a segment we like to call a man and a beer can always get along. It's uh, um, many of you know, actress Rachel Weiss, 
uh, from her uh, series of lectures include and called Rachel Vice's uh, uh, Advice for Surviving Animal Attacks. And I, I'd like I'd like to thank the graphics department for the work they, they did and what you're seeing now. They stayed up late. Um, but you might also you didn't know, probably didn't know she's also an actress. Uh, she was in a movie called The Mummy, and now she's in something called Dead Ringers, which is a new take on the old David Cronenberg movie. So she plays one of, well, she plays two twins in it, and she's fantastic. I really, really you should check out Dead Ringers. I haven't seen a wardrobe mal there's lots of nudity, but I haven't seen that uh, wardrobe malfunction like on number 73. So please check check all this stuff out. This band is really good too. <clears throat> so we talk about Eager Paisley next? <laughs> <laughs> I remember uh, even less it. about that. I had to find out what weird film came out. <laughs> I think Pink Nights 2 had come out around the time of that. It would be weird if they released Maybe. the Pink Nights film every time we released an album. <laughs> it's just... Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, oh, Pink Nights. I, just, I guess Bob Dickey wasn't an engineer because he's not on the credits at all, but... Oh, yeah, see, I, oh, it is. I, I, it says he recorded might have, and mixed like, by told Bob us Dickey. about the studio, but I don't remember him being. You, got, you guys remember? No, right? it is. It you says could... recorded and mixed by Bob Dickey and John Wick. So I oh, okay. There you see, go. Oh, Bob Dickey, you're is, so I, fine. You're so fine. You blow my mind, Bob Dickey. It's too late to yeah, put this. Bob Dickey. But now, now I remember what I the second the second session Bob Dickey couldn't be at, but we did it anyway. Like the 1985 session. Screw that guy. <laughs> and <laughs> that's what upset. That's what. Uh, that's why Bob. Got got me the guitar sound I wanted through the board. Through he overmodulated it, and John Wicks wouldn't do that. And I didn't know how to describe it back then. Like, and I guess John Wicks wouldn't overmodulate it anyway, even because if he could. Bob but. was bending the rules. <laughs> Bob had tickets to see Pink Nights, and he wasn't. And going that's to why <laughs> it's it's ever so subtle, but you can you can tell those ten songs apart from the others just from that alone. I can't remember. Guitar. Were you already playing an SG guitar then? Yes. Okay. I got. I had. I already had my black SG. I didn't get the backup until after our first tour. They. I didn't get the backup until '86. The um. The one that had the big speed whammy bar on it. The, Why does it have to be a black one? SG? Why can't it just be an SG? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They they, they sound you better. No, you remember Jason? Huh? Remember Jason Rose? Yes. He works there now, third story. Yes. At the I new at the new location. Yeah. You mentioned that in one of the recommendations too. Oh yeah. Yeah. He started working there a few months ago, or I guess a little longer. So ago. that's that's where Eat Your Paisley was recorded, the other third story. Oh, so it's been there since then. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yes. It's, 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 if it's you go to the website, there. it's been it's advertised as the longest running uh, studio in, in Philadelphia. And it's not on the third floor. It's it's in a former like gar garage, uh, yeah. auto garage, auto mechanic garage. Yeah. yeah. Bessie Ross recorded there. It's been there forever. <laughs> and we also did the video for the thing that only hippies at that yes, third did. story location. Yes, we did.